Hello, my name is David Lesser and welcome to ZeroCraft, the makerspace in Tucson. I wanted to shoot a video about how to design parts to make on a, a CNC router or a laser cutter using Inkscape. Uh, I feel like uh, SolidWorks and other CAD packages are fantastic for very complicated shapes, but are far too complicated and far too uh, unwieldy to use for relatively simple things. And so I couldn't really find any great tutorials on using 2D packages like Illustrator or Inkscape to do these, so I decided to shoot my own video. So here we go. Now the subject of this video is going to hinge around the design of a stool just like this one here. This is a, a relatively simple shape in that there's only four pieces that interlock to make this chair. There are two identical side pieces, sort of leg pieces, that interlock. Uh, there's the seat and there's this foot stool part, um, which is essentially designed to slide down over the top and then make a quarter turn into this notch to lock all the legs in place. So this is hardly uh, a, a simple thing, but it's fairly basic uh, and is a fantastic choice to design in a program like Inkscape or Illustrator, uh, which is going to be so much faster than trying to model the whole thing in a uh, full-fledged CAD package. So you can see this whole thing is just held together with friction, uh, interlocking tabs uh, and slots that uh, attach everything together here. Uh, this thing is strong as hell despite having no glue, no screws, no nails, no nothing. Uh, and so we'll talk about how to make something just like this in just a second. So here are the four constituent parts uh, broken down. As you can see, the leg pieces are almost identical, save for the different orientation of the dados that let them interlock. This uh, foot support ring thingamabobber uh, is a little bit weird in how it has these swoops that go from relatively thin to relatively thick. These slide into these side notches uh, and lock the whole thing together that way. Uh, and then last but not least, the seat uh, simply has these four grooves in there that these uh, top parts of the legs fit into. Okay, so let's put it together. Now, we're going to start off by interlocking these two pieces. This one has a slot put in the bottom so it can fit over the other one like this. And then I give it a quarter turn and I can make these two slots interlock with each other. Just like this. So, there are the legs assembled. Next, I'll put this ring on, and so I'll find the thin part and slide that down over the legs until I get down to the notch area, and I can now slide this piece uh, into place. Take my time, sliding them all more or less evenly. Just like that, more or less. And then last but not least, we'll put the top on, get the tabs into the slots, more or less. And that's going to look a little like that. So, this thing is, uh, you know, pretty sturdy. 
It does have a little bit of a twist to it, but uh, I have no qualms about putting a couple of large people on something like this. It ain't going anywhere. All right, here we are with a brand new document opened in Inkscape. And the first thing we're going to do is get the document set up for what we want to be doing. So I'm going to go to File and then Document Properties. Now, uh, the first thing here is to set the display units to what you want, whether it's centimeters or inches. In this case, I'll be doing it in inches. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the custom size of my document to match the material that I'm working with. So this might be the size of your laser cutter or if you're trying to uh, compress all of your pieces into one sheet of material, uh, this is going to really help you uh, know where you are there. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'll switch to inches again and I'm going to make this 36 inches wide and 45 inches tall because that is the size of my machine. Alrighty, so now I'm going to go ahead and get started. When I'm using Inkscape I always keep my offhand on the uh, control shift and alt keys on the keyboard because that's really going to help change how every tool works in this software. So right now I'm scrolling up and down with a scroll wheel on the mouse and you can see that I'm actually going up and down. But if I hold control down instead this becomes zoom in and out which is very very helpful for seeing the big scale and the small scale of what you're working on. Um, so here we are. Now the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to get started on the legs. Now there are going to be two different leg pieces that are mostly identical and of course each of those leg pieces is, is itself symmetric. Now my general rule of thumb is when I'm making something that's going to be repeated uh, I just make it once and then copy and paste it. It's going to save me a lot of time and really prevent me uh, getting myself in trouble when I think something's identical but it isn't actually. So let's go ahead and start making half of one of the legs and then we'll just copy and paste it over. So I'm going to start off by making a rectangle here. Uh, and usually what I do is I just draw a rectangle, I don't really care what size it is. And then I can uh, change the width and the height to get it to the exact size that I want. Now in my case, uh, I'm going to want the base of my uh, the base of my stool to be 19 inches wide. Since this is half, that's going to make this 9.5 inches wide. And then the height is going to be 28 inches high. Now, uh, so here is essentially half of my, my leg so far. Uh, now, I could just make this rectangular, but that's going to be a little bit boring. So we'll try to dress this up a little bit. Now, Inkscape will treat some objects specially. Normally objects are simply just a bunch of points and lines uh, with no real significance ascribed to them. But oftentimes you want to, 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 to treat it with a little bit more uh, care. For instance, text is the classic example. Uh, you might want to go back and change the font or change the, the wording of a, of a word. Uh, and, and the last thing that you want to do is have it forget that this is text and just think of it as a bunch of lines. Uh, and so we've got that same situation going on here with this rectangle. I can always double click on this rectangle and I can say change the radius of curvature of the corners uh, to something uh, different than what it was. Uh, and that's often a, a very helpful thing, but it's not what I want right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell Inkscape to just treat this like a dumb bunch of lines. And that's going to be here in Object to Path. So now that I've stripped away all of the, 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 the rectangleness of this object, uh, I can click on this tool here. And this will let me grab individual corners and line segments and manipulate them to my will. So I can do all sorts of weird stuff with this thing that makes it no longer be a rectangle. I'll just undo that. So what I want to do first off is I'm going to want to make this stool taper towards the top. And I can do that quite simply by just grabbing one of these anchor points and I can cheat it in a little ways. So I decided that I wanted my top to be 11 inches wide at the at the top part. Um, and 
So that means I want to lose a total of 8 inches from the width. But since this is half, uh, I'll only cheat it in by 4, so I can just say x mi minus 4, and here we go. Uh, so we're getting a little closer now. Uh, now this is looking pretty good, but uh, just for the sake of uh, making it look a little prettier, I'm going to go back to my selection tool here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this diagonal segment curved. And so I can come up here to the uh, to the anchor manipulation bar, we'll call it here, uh, and I can, when I select that line, I can make it curved right over here. And what that did is that created two little handles where I can essentially make this line curved. Essentially what's going to happen here is the 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 curve coming out of this point is going to try to leave on this angle and same thing here it will try to come into this point at this angle and essentially the length of the line judges how strongly it, it prefers to do one or the other. Now in my case what I think I want to do is just have sort of a a nice sort of shallow curve something that looks a little bit like that. That looks pretty good to me. So, there we are. Now, uh, the one last thing that I'd like to do here is I'd like to change around how the bottom works. Now, if I left this like this, this stool would have a huge amount of surface area against the ground. The whole width would all be touching the ground. Now, in a perfectly flat room, that's not a big deal. But oftentimes, chairs with large, flat surfaces on the bottom tend to increase the likelihood that you get some pebble or some unevenness in the floor under one of those parts, and then the whole thing's going to teeter-totter. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out a bunch of material in here to essentially create a little foot out on the edge. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I am going to use what I think is probably the most powerful tool in Inkscape, and that is the addition and subtraction and, and all of that sort of, sort of stuff. So I'm going to draw a rectangle, which is going to have the shape that I want to cut out. Uh, and so uh, what I want is sort of a rounded rectangle cut out of here. And I'll just change that over here. Maybe that's a little bit more than I'd like. That looks good. Now, I'm going to change the color of this so it's easier for us to see. So let's make this a red. And now I can go ahead and find where I want this to look. Uh, this is mostly a cosmetic thing, so I'm not going to worry too much about numbers. I'm just going to play around with this until it, it looks nice to me. Um, and that there looks looks pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with that. So I will just select my two objects by just shift clicking both of them. And then I can go to Path and do Difference. And that is going to create a new path which is the black one minus the red one. And there we go. So here is pretty much my shape. Uh, I'm going to do one last thing here while I'm at it, and that is to create a little tab in the top here. And that tab is going to fit into a recess in the seat to hold the seat on. And you might as well do that now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to make a small rectangle here. I'll set this back to straight corners. And so I am going to want to make this, well, we'll do something like one inch wide and maybe about, let's say, a half an inch tall. Now, to make my life easier, what I think I'm going to do here is I'm going to use, I, I'm going to want to have this be a very nice uh, distance relative to the rest of it to make my figuring easier. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the snapping features here. Uh, I can enable snapping to bounding boxes. And I'm going to then make this snap to the corner uh, of that. 
And so when I enable these two, what you'll see is the corner of this one box is going to snap to the corner of the other box. Uh, and now I know that these are perfectly lined up and that this edge, these two edges are exactly flush. And so what I can do is again, just offset this by some simple amount, maybe say four inches. And now I know that there's going to be four inches of a gap between the center and this edge. And since this tab is one inch wide, I know that the outer edges of the two tabs I'm going to have are going to be 10 inches apart, and the inner edges are going to be 8 inches apart, and that's going to make my life very easy. And now I'll just zoom out, control scroll again, uh, and I can select my two objects and add them together using the path union tool. And so here is pretty much my final shape. Now, uh, let's go ahead and make the full shape. And so to do that, I'm just going to simply copy and paste with Control C and Control V. And so here's my, my other shape. I can use the mirror tool here to flip it horizontally. And now using that same snapping feature that is still enabled, I can make this thing snap to that one. And I should be able to select these both and union them to create my final shape. So here's what my legs are going to ultimately look like. Um, I could keep this full like this, but um, to me this looks a little bit chunky. Uh, it's kind of unnecessary to have the center filled in like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it out and leave uh, a maybe more traditional looking leg shape. Now there's a few different ways that you can do this, but the way I like to do is with the offset tool. So I'm going to copy and paste this again, uh, and I will change the color, again for contrast. Uh, and now we'll go ahead and overlap the two with each other. Now, if I go to Path, I can do offsets. Uh, and I'm going to use the Dynamic Offset tool here. And what that's going to let me do, is it's, it's going to let me uh, offset the path from itself, so essentially making a new path that's just out a little ways or a lot of ways from my original line. So I can either go big or I can go small. And so here I'm just going to go ahead and again eyeball what looks to be good to me. Uh, and I think that looks really nice. Uh, and so all I have to do is again select my two shapes and go ahead and do difference and now I have what I think is going to be my real ultimate final shape. Now doing it this way has made my life a little bit harder because I don't really know what this dimension is uh, and when I want to put some tabs in here I'm gonna have to know what that is a and so in order to figure that out I'm gonna use the measurement tool this is a fantastic tool that I really love a lot, uh, and I am going to use this to measure exactly how thick this material ended up being. So I'll just click here, and I'll go down. Uh, a, a very handy trick whenever you're creating just about any structure is if I hold down Control, it's going to force angles to be sort of uh, common, common choices, like 90 degrees here. If I let go, it'll let me do any angle I want and usually, you know, you don't want 92.8 inches. So what I really want is to measure at 90. And so this is going to tell me here that the width of that little bit there is 1.75 inches, uh, which is nice and kind of uh, serendipitous that I got one and three quarters just, just by eyeballing it. But uh, won't look a gift horse in the mouth. So um, so that's going to be a very helpful number for me to to keep track of in my head. In fact, I can bump up the precision here and know that it's in fact 1.751. And uh, yeah, that's, that should be very nice. Alrighty, there is one last feature that I'm going to need to add to these legs before we really are completely done with the, the symmetric parts of them. And that's going to be putting in the slots for that stiffening ring that goes in right around here. Now, I 
probably could have done that before we cloned the left and the right sides. But I kind of wanted to, to see what it was going to look like. And I'll do it here w as a whole. And that will sh show you how you can make things symmetric. Now, there's a couple of different ways to do this. Uh, but what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to create a little rectangle that kind of is going to help me just eyeball where I want to put things. And so this is going to kind of help me get a sense of where looks good to have this thing be going. So I can go ahead and just sort of lay this out, put it in a place that seems to look good to me. Uh, and I think this, this looks pretty reasonable here. Um, but I've just been clicking and dragging this thing around. So I can't really trust it to be very accurate. So what I can do, uh, first and foremost, is to use uh, another very powerful uh, tool called Align and Distribute, which is going to be down here under Object. Uh, and this will let me uh, align and distribute multiple objects so that they're all, in this case, what I want is to make them all lined up centered on the vertical axis. So no matter where they happen to be, if I hit that button, they're all going to line up perfectly uh, in a straight line. Um, very, very handy, handy tool. So, so that's kind of where uh, I'm going to like to do this. And so what I can do is I can actually use this as my guide to set up my, uh, my two little cutouts. Now, what I can do is I can start off by creating again the shape that I want to cut out. The width here doesn't matter because I'm just going to use that snapping feature to snap it to the corner uh, and just eat away all of that material. But the height matters a ton. So when you are buying plywood, you need to be very, very careful about what the true dimension really is. Uh, in America, when you are buying plywood that is labeled as, say, a half an inch, uh, it is almost never actually a half an inch. Uh, it is either metric or it's some strange uh, 17, 30 seconds sort of thing. So I cannot urge you enough to get a good set of calipers and measure the true dimension of the plywood that you happen to have bought. Uh, lower quality plywood will even vary from sheet to sheet uh, from the same pile. So. It never hurts to be more paranoid about what the true dimension is. Getting this number right is uh, a big difference between a nice tight-fitting joint and a very loose uh, joint that will be weaker and will be less uh, appealing to sit in because it'll wobble. Um, so uh, again, be very careful about what this dimension is. In my case, I happen to have found what I can honestly say is the first ever sheet of plywood that is actually three quarters of an inch tall. Uh, and so I will set the height uh, accordingly. Now, um, I can go ahead and simply zoom in and we'll just snap corner to corner just like that. And I can copy it and paste it over here and do the same thing right over there. Now, this guide is no longer useful, so I'll just hit delete and get rid of it. And I can go ahead and simply subtract off my little slots. And so there we go. There is our, our full leg. And we're ready to copy and paste this and produce a second one. Now, what we need to do is we need to work on the portion that interlocks the two together. And so what that means is I'm going to create a little notch in the top part of this one and a corresponding notch in the bottom part of this one. And so that is going to be how they are going to interlock. Same thing down here. The one last thing that I'm going to need to do is if you think about it, if there's a, a notch in the top here and a notch in the top there and a notch in the bottom here and a notch in the bottom there, they won't actually be able to fit inside of each other unless I slot f all the way through one of these pieces. Uh, and so I'll have to throw that into one of these as well. 
All right, we'll we'll jump right into it. Uh, I can actually go ahead and just, oops, uh, I can go ahead and create another little uh, cutout piece. Remember what we were talking about before? The uh, the thickness here is 1.75 one inches, and so what I'll do is I'll create another little cutout piece. That's the width of the plywood and 1.751 divided by 2 inches high. And so this is going to be the little piece that I'm going to use to delete off from the rest of it. Now, uh, what I can do here is I can use my bounding box snapping. So I'm snapping the midpoint of this box to the midpoint of that box and I know that this is a half an inch so I can simply subtract off 0.5 and now I know that this is going to be exactly at the top part of that. Um, now a little bit more tricky is to align it here. So what I can do is I can again snap these to the the midpoint, so I know that they're lined up center to center. Um, if I click and drag while holding down control, I can force it again to go straight up and down or straight left and right from where it was. And so this is going to be my way that I can just scroll it down to here. And I'm going to then snap two paths to get this thing to snap right there. So it aligns up with the top of that path. And so there are the two cutouts that I need in this piece. And if I want to get extra sneaky, I can copy the two and paste them and do the same thing just like before, but now do it the other way. So here I'm going to subtract off the bottom half of the top and bottom parts. So now we'll just go ahead and go through. Uh, I'm going to now use the hotkeys, which is just uh, control, sh control and minus here to do this uh, subtraction. Something else that I often do is you can add these two shapes together with uh, control and plus, and then I can subtract that combined shape from here. Uh, if you don't want to individually delete every single piece. And so, hopefully now you can picture how this thing is going to fit. Um, the one last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the smallest possible notch uh, in this part here, uh, just so that I can fit this piece through here and get it inter interlocked there. Now, since I'm going to be making this with a router, uh, if, if I want the router to cut this, then I'm going to need to take out at least the width of the router bit. Um, I could conceivably just do this by hand with a saw or something and just uh, saw through it and, and have the, the cut be smaller. But that seems kind of a little bit weird to me. So uh, I'm just going to put a notch into it. And for the sake of uh, being sneaky, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the notch in up here because I think that it's going to the uh, the seat is really going to add a lot of reinforcing up here so cutting through this section doesn't really change much um, and uh, I think that's probably going to be the smartest option so what we're going to do here I'm going to be using a eighth inch router bit uh, sorry a, a quarter inch router bit and so I'll just create uh, a little piece here that's a quarter inch wide uh, and then wash, rinse, repeat. Um, I'm going to get these things to snap midpoint to midpoint and then control and scroll down until I have the thing right where I want it and then delete again. And so here are my two completed lug pieces. Uh, and if I wanted to get even fancier, I can potentially think about how I'm going to arrange these in the sheet of plywood that I have. 
And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this twice until I get the rotation tool. And I can again hold control to uh, quantize the steps. If I let go of control, then it's free rotation. So I'll make this maybe at a 90 degree. Um, so here I'm, sometimes when you keep the snapping features enabled, they start to fight you. So I'm just going to disable all of the snapping for now. Um, and so I can think about how I want to arrange these two pieces so that they fit nicely in my, my volume here. And so now, hopefully I have enough room here to make the top and the, the stiffening piece. So, um, now I have two things to make. I have the seat to make and I have the, 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 the leg rest, the foot rest to make. Um, and we could start off with the seat because that's probably easier. Um, now, we did 11 inches wide here at the top, but let's go ahead and make the, the seat itself closer to 13 inches wide. And so that's just simply going to be a circle uh, that's going to be width 13, height 13. And next I'm going to have to put in the little tabs for the these little, uh, 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 sorry, the slots for these tabs to fit into. And so uh, if you remember, these things were one inch wide and they were, uh, let's see, eight inches between the edges. And so that would make them nine inches on center from each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my little, my little pieces. And this is going to be the width of the plywood, which is 0.75 and one inch high. And now I'm going to simply copy and paste this. I'm going to use my snapping features to overlap the two rectangles with each other. And now I'm going to offset this down by nine inches. And presto, there are my two tabs nice and aligned. In fact, if I want to be extra special sure, I can confirm that that's going to look right, which it does. And so I should be able to align these up with this, which I can't do right now because they are really just two different objects. And so Inkscape won't know where to snap. But if I select these two together and turn them into a group, then Inkscape will treat these two objects as one. So if I click on one, it will select the group. It won't just select the one. And this is a fantastic way of keeping two linked objects together. And so now I should be able to snap to the centers of this circle. So there is my group snapping to the center of the circle. And all I have to do is simply copy and paste and now I'll rotate this by 90 degrees and do the same thing again. And here is my seat ready to cut out. Now, I'm not going to subtract these shapes from that because in the case of the router, I don't actually want to cut all the way through the seat. I simply want to make a recess uh, that's this deep into the, the, the seat so that when we flip it over, the seat top will be smooth and continuous. I, it'll just have these little insets in the bottom that those tabs will fit into. Uh, and so the way my CAM program works, I can uh, select this shape and tell it to cut that shape out. And I'll also be able to select these shapes and tell it to pocket those. So I'm happy as things currently are. Now the last thing to do is maybe the hardest, and that is making the, the footrest. And so we're going to need to take a few dimensions off of this thing. Uh, now first off, I'm going to want to use the cusp measuring tool. Uh, and what this will let me do is it will let me use the measure uh, with the cusp snap so that when I go to click, it will automatically uh, change 
the spot that I'm clicking at to line up with that cusp node right there. Uh, and so essentially what I need to do is I need to figure out what the dimension uh, inside this is. And so that is going to tell me that that is 13.214, uh, which I will write down. And then I also need to know what this dimension is. Essentially, what I need to do is I need to make that spiral sort of shape so that it will pass over this corner and fit down into here. And then I want to twist the whole shape so that it will lock in against this uh, edge here. If that doesn't make sense yet, uh, hopefully that will become clear in a minute. So we'll just grab this dimension as well. Uh, and so that dimension we can see is 14.446. Alrighty. So um, we can go ahead and get started here. And so uh, I'm going to have to set the dimensions of the ring. Uh, I'll start off by making the outside diameter of the ring to something that's a little bit bigger uh, than this shape. So I've got a, a, a good bit of meat around the outside. And I think that wants to be something like uh, maybe 16 and a half inches. Uh, that's going to give me at least one inch all the way around the outside. Uh, and now I can get to work on the inside dimension of this. Uh, and that's just going to want to be a little bit smaller than the smaller of my two numbers that I measured earlier. And so since the smaller of those numbers is 13.2 inches, maybe I'll make this uh, just uh, 13 point, uh, sorry, 12.75. Sounds decent to me. Um, and now I'm going to simply overlay these two on top of each other, bounding box midpoint to midpoint, and simply s subtract the two. Next, what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to set uh, two different spots. So there are sort of two different uh, thicknesses, uh, inside dimension uh, thicknesses that are irrelevant. There's the portion that needs to fit over this corner and the portion that needs to lock against that edge. Uh, and so we can do that in either, either way, but let's go ahead and just start with the the bigger of the two. Uh, so just like before, I'm going to make a tab that is the uh, thickness of the material. Um, and we'll go ahead and make this say something easy like two inches tall. Um, and now I need to snap these over each other. And I now want to make sure that I'm going to be cutting away uh, exactly 13.214 inches. Since these are two inches wide, I can subtract two inches off of that uh, and simply uh, now shift this by 11.214. I'll, uh, I'll change the color here to make it a little bit more obvious what's going on. And now I'm going to uh, add these together and I should be able to snap using the center line stuff to snap these two so that they'll fit. Um, and again, copy, paste, rotate, and align again. And there are the two pieces that I'm going to, sub uh, the four pieces that I'm going to subtract from there. Next, what I'm going to want to do is uh, put in a deeper notch for the portion that's going to slip over that corner. Uh, and so in order to set that, uh, I will again create a shape that's the width of the plywood and we'll make it again two inches wide. Uh, I'll copy and paste this, overlap them. And now I need something that is closer to 14.446. Uh, and so again, I'll subtract off that 14.446 minus 2. Uh, 
So I'll get 12.446, and I can add these shapes and bring them over there. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to offset these by some amount. Uh, and that is going to make it very easy to uh, twist these around. I'm going to rotate that by 90 degrees. And so if I add these, and subtract them from this, I now have the, s the setting points of this arc. So now all I have to do is conjoin these two lines uh, into one smooth shape. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply use the direct selection tool to grab this line segment and delete it. And now I'm just going to take this line segment and very simply turn this from a curved line into a straight line. And so that should allow me to slide this portion over that tooth. And then by rotating the entire thing, it will end up locking against that section. Um, and so this is easy enough to just simply repeat three times for these three line segments, and then make this one straight, and that one straight, and this one straight. And so there is my final shape, ready to rock and roll. Now, uh, I have essentially made all the pieces that I need to make. And if I was blessed with a laser cutter that was big enough to fit something this big into, I would be more or less ready to go. But because I have the router, uh, my life is a little bit more complicated by the fact that I need to be very careful about all of these inside corners that I'm trying to cut. Because while it may appear to be a crisp line here, uh, a crisp corner, what's actually going to happen is my router, uh, which I already said was going to be uh, a quarter of an inch wide, is going to cut in along this line and then it's going to try to cut along this line and it's going to leave a radius on the inside of this corner. In some cases here, for instance this part here inside the leg, I actually want that radius. It's kind of nice, uh, it makes it look a little nicer and it makes it stronger. But here in these tabs and slots uh, it's going to kill me because it means that my parts aren't going to fit together the way I was hoping that they would. Uh, and so uh, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to uh, tell the machine to eat out extra material here in order to ensure that my, my pieces will interlock the way I'm hoping that they will. Uh, and so essentially all I'm going to do is I, I'm just going to use a little circle that's a quarter inch uh, in diameter and so what I'll just do is use my snapping features to grab this circle and put it where I want it. Uh, and I'll just copy and paste. And so by subtracting these two shapes from the overall shape, I'm now going to end up with, an, with the ability for a sharp external corner to fit into this area. Some CAM packages are smart enough to try to do this for you, but uh, in this case, I kind of like to do it myself. It doesn't take very long, and it lets me uh, put those cutouts exactly where I want them. So in this case, for instance, uh, I would much rather have this uh, extra nibble going in this direction rather than this direction, because if I go this way, I'm going to cut into what is already a fairly thin piece. The last thing I want to do is make it thinner. But it doesn't really hurt me nearly as much to cut out material in this direction. So by doing it manually, I get to kind of set the, the directions that I want to go with this. So uh, basically, again, I can either put it in to go this way. I can have it go that way. Or if you want to be extra fancy, you could try to put it uh, right into the corner. Um, but uh, usually you just want to go one way or the other. 
In this case, again, strength-wise, I don't want to eat into the leg of my stool, uh, so I'm going to go this way rather than this way, given uh, where this tab is. So again, I can simply select these two shapes uh, and add them and then subtract that from the rest of the shape to give me something that looks like this. Okay, so I didn't want to bore you to tears with the uh, all of the work of putting in all those little circles, uh, but this is what the final project looks like. You can see in, in each of these spots I put in all of the little uh, the little nibbles that I need to do to get everything to interlock properly. Um, as I said, some of these uh, I feel like are more important, you know, preserving the, the strength of this leg by nibbling this way rather than this way. Some of them, uh, like in the case of these, really don't matter at all. Uh, but uh, it's, uh, it's worth thinking about before you you jump into just putting the, the, the nibbles wherever it seemed like a good idea at the time. Um, and so this shape is uh, ready to go. This, this is a, a, a stool that is done. Um, uh, one last thing to mention. Now, the way my CAM software works for the, the CNC router is uh, such that I, I don't really have to care about colors or anything. All I do is I just select a shape and I say, cut this shape out, you know, follow along the outside of this line and cut it out. Uh, so I'm ready to pull this over into uh, VCarve Pro, which is what I use. Um, but depending on uh, which software you're using or which machine you're using, uh, you may find yourself needing to do a little bit more work. So for instance, with laser cutters, uh, what you really need to do is for a cutout shape, you need a thin line rather than the solid uh, fills that I have here. Uh, and so I'll just quickly show you how to do that uh, if you uh, are interested in laser cutting rather than CNC routing. Uh, and to do that, all I'm just going to do is I'm going to go to the uh, fill and stroke command, which is here in object. Um, and so that will pull up a window that uh, shows me what uh, the fills and strokes are. So right now this has a solid blue fill um, which I would want to disable by clicking on the X uh, and then what I'm going to want is a stroke, uh, an outline stroke that is solid. Um, you may or may not want to color code uh, your, your, your cut lines. Um, in the case of the Trotec laser that we have at ZeroCraft uh, we like to usually use red uh, for the cut lines, and so I can set this to solid red here. Um, and then last but not least, these cut lines usually need to be very thin for the laser to interpret them as, in fact, cut lines. So I usually tell people to make things uh, one thousandth of an inch or one one hundredth of a millimeter, depending on how you uh, like to, to do units. Now, you may have noticed something that my shape just disappeared when I set the width to be really small. And this is essentially a, a fact that, remember this is uh, almost a, a yard across from uh, edge of the page to edge of the page, that's about a meter. Um, and my thickness of this line is incredibly tiny in comparison to that. And so Inkscape essentially doesn't draw these lines because they're so much smaller than pixels uh, on the screen that uh, it just averages out to white. Um, which may be uh, accurate but not helpful. Uh, and so I will either have to zoom in in order to get those lines to show up, or uh, an alternate option that I can do is I can go to View Display Mode, and if I go to Outline, it will show everything as a black outline regardless of what it actually is. You can see uh, the things that were filled are now gone, the things that were uh, Colors are now not colored anymore, um, uh, and so this can be a very handy trick for seeing all those thin lines without having to zoom in and scroll around uh, searching. Um, but that's that. That's ready to rock and roll. Um, so uh, I hope you enjoy this. I hope you learn something, uh, and uh, I, I hope you uh, try to use this, this uh, software. It's uh, really fantastic for doing this kind of stuff. Alrighty. See you next time.